What time is it? Kindergarten and first grade, welcome back. Today is our last assignment with African environments. We made the plains, the savannas, the flat grassy areas for two weeks. We made African jungles for two weeks. And today is our last day of Egyptian deserts. We are going to stamp camels on our landscape. But first I wanna read you this. How the Camel Got His Hump by Rudyard Kipling and adapted by Lisbeth Zwerger. Now this tale tells how the camel got his big hump. In the beginning of years, when the world was so new and all, and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel, and he lived in the middle of a howling desert because he did not want to work. And besides, he was a howler himself. So he ate sticks and thorns and tamarisks and milkweed and prickles, most excruciatingly idle. And when anyone spoke to him, he said, <laughs> just <laughs> presently, the horse came to him on Monday morning with a saddle on his back and a bit in his mouth and said, Camel, old camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. <laughs> said the camel, and the horse went away and told the man. Presently, the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel, come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. <laughs> said the camel, and the dog went away and told the man. Presently, the ox came to him with a yoke on his neck and said, Camel, oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. <laughs> said the camel, and the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, Three, oh three. I'm very sorry for you, with the world so new and all. But that hump thing in the desert can't work, or he would have been here by now. So I'm going to leave him alone, and you must work double time to make up for it. That made the three very angry, with the world so new and all. And the three held a palaver, an indaba and a punkiet, and a powwow at the edge of the desert. And the camel came chewing milkweed, most excruciatingly idle and laughed at them. Then he said, <laughs> and went away again. Presently there came along the djinn in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Djinns always travel that way because it is magic. And he stopped to palaver and powwow with the three. Djinn of all deserts, said the horse. Is it right for anyone to be idle with the world so new and all? Certainly not, said the djinn. Well, said the horse, there's a thing in the middle of your howling desert, and he's a howler himself, with a long neck and long legs, and he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot. <whistles> said the djinn, whistling. That's my camel. For all the gold in Arabia, what does he say about it? He says, humph, said the dog, and he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? Only humph, and he won't plow said the ox. Very good, said the djinn. I'll humph him, if you will kindly wait a minute. The djinn rolled himself up in his dust cloak and took a bearing across the desert and found the camel most excruciatingly idle, looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. My long and bubbling friend, said the djinn, what's this I hear of your doing no work with the world so new and all? <laughs> said the camel. The djinn sat down with his chin in his hand and began to think of a great magic while the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. You've given the three extra work ever since Monday morning, all on account of your excruciatingly idleness, said the djinn. And he went on thinking magics with his chin in his hand. Hmm, <laughs> said the camel. I shouldn't say that again if I were you, said the djinn. You might say it once too often. Bubbles, I want you to work. And the camel said, <laughs> again. But no sooner had he said it than he saw his back that he was so proud of, puffing up and puffing up into a great lolloping hump. 
This is the picture of the djinn making the beginnings of the magic that brought the hump to the camel. First he drew a line in the air with his finger and it became solid. And then he made a cloud and then he made an egg and you can see them at the bottom of the picture. And then there was a magic pumpkin that turned into a big white flame. Then the djinn took his magic fan and fanned the flame till the flame turned into a magic by itself. It was a good magic and a very kind magic really, though it had to give the camel a hump because the camel was lazy. The djinn in charge of all deserts was one of the nicest of the djinns, so he would never do anything really unkind. Here is the picture of the djinn in charge of all deserts, guiding the magic with his magic fan. The camel is eating a twig of acacia, and he has just finished saying humph once too often. The djinn told him he, the djinn told him he would, and so the humph is coming. The long, towelly thing growing out of the thing like an onion is the magic, and you can see the humph on its shoulder. The hump fits on the flat part of the camel's back. The camel's too busy looking at his own beautiful self in the pool of water to know what is going to happen to him. Underneath the truly picture is a picture of the world so new and all. There are two smoky volcanoes in it, some other mountains and some stones and a lake and a black island and a twisty river and a lot of other things as well as Noah's Ark. I couldn't draw all the deserts that the djinn was in charge of, so I only drew one, but it is the most deserty desert. Did you see that? said the djinn. That's your very own humph that you brought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday, and you've done no work since Monday when the work began. Now you are going to work. How can I, said the camel, with this <sighs> on my back? That's made a purpose, said the djinn, all because you missed those three days. You will be able to work now for three days without eating, because you can live on your hump. And don't you ever say I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert and go to the three and behave. Humph yourself. And the camel humphed himself, humph and all, and went away to join the three. And from that day to this, the camel always wears a humph. We call it a hump now, not to hurt his feelings. But he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world. And he has never yet learned how to behave. The end. All of that was make-believe. Cut three yellow triangles off of yellow construction paper. We're going to glue those down in the background, kind of in the left and on the middle. And those are going to be three pyramids out in the distance. The next thing we're going to do is take one of my handy-dandy camel stamps, and we are going to stamp a camel train. We're going to stamp three camels side by side. They can overlap the pyramids. They can overlap the palm tree. And that will be two weeks worth of work. I can't wait to see what it looks like. Bye. For pro tips, I just wanted to talk to you about the importance of painter's tape. That's how you get straight edges. And I've got my gigantic level here that also allows me to draw straight lines. When I made this picture, I drew it on paper, I scanned it in the computer, and then I composited it onto a photo of this wall. And some things have to change. Uh, on this picture, the little girl is like touching the people with the ladder, so I had to change the ladder people. I had to move them over. Uh, I'm still pretty much sticking to plan. The ladder extends over the two water fountains, so that's good. And you can change your mind early in these steps. I actually changed my mind and added a sidewalk for all the characters to walk on. So everything that was in this rough plan, it's not very rough, but everything that was in this plan will be shifted up. So I guess my pro tip is measure, use tape for straight lines, cover your ears, here comes bonus <laughs> Bonus points! Kindergarten, first grade, bonus points. Just tell me what year the book was published. That's it. See you next time. Bye.